Welcome back to our final segment on InfoWars Nightly News. This is our July 1st, 2015 segment. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Joining me now on the phone is the organizer for SB277 Recalls. It is Lauren Stevens. Lauren, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So tell me, what was the impetus for starting uh, SB277 Recalls? What got you involved in this? Just give everybody out there the whole pitch. <laughs> Thanks. Well, this started um, over the Senate vote in favor of SB 277, which not sure if everybody realizes this, but this was passed not just by Democrats, but also by a few Republicans. Um, and one of the supporters of one of those Republican senators contacted me about doing the recall. And once I got on board with that, then other people started contacting me to do recalls in their district as well. So. You know, we've been pretty busy the past, what, six weeks, I guess it is, trying to get some of these recalls initiated. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a while. It takes about a month or so to actually get to the certification process through the state. And what will happen uh, when you recall a senator? Well, how, how does that process work and how long would it take from the initiation of it to actually get them removed from office? Well, here's how it works in the state of California, which, you know, I was involved in some recalls in Wisconsin, and California actually has a much better and more efficient system, believe it or not. Um, what happens here is that initially you'll do an intent to recall notice. So we have to get 40 to 60 signatures uh, from people in whatever district. We serve that, the intent to recall on the lawmaker, senator, or assembly person, um, they have seven days to come up with a response. Once that happens, we have to file uh, all this stuff in the newspaper. We have to publish it in the newspaper, which is very expensive. It's like a quarter page display ad, so they're, they're not cheap. Um, once that happens, then we have to draft a recall petition. And then the state has, um, I'm not sure the timeline, but the state has to certify that. Once that is certified, then we get the green light to start. And from there we get, uh, I think it's 160 days to get the amount of signatures. And the number of signatures is all listed on our website. So people can kind of get an idea of, you know, some districts are much tougher than others and some are much easier than others to get the signatures, much lower signature amount. Right. And so right now, I guess you're looking for volunteers and people to get on with this effort, also conduct different uh, social media campaigns to get people, I guess, bring up awareness to this, that this could actually happen, that we don't need medical tyranny forced down our throats, especially when Jerry Brown's the same governor that vetoed a bill about mandatory <laughs> helmets back in 2011, it, saying it's the parents' responsibility. Yeah, well, you know, it's not just that, but we had AB 2109 a couple of years ago where... Uh, Jerry Brown made an executive order that said um, that parents still could keep their parental and religious rights and opt out through that. But so, honest to God, I don't know anybody who really thought he was going to sign SB 277. I, I think it's bizarre. I wasn't expecting it. I mean, we all knew there was a chance, but he didn't waste any time. I mean, he did this within 24 hours of the bill signing, uh, within 24 hours of the bill passing the Senate. And he had 12 days. So I think he was sending us a clear message by doing it so quickly. Um, it's pretty astonishing. You know, Democrats are supposed to be pro-choice. They're supposed to be pro-freedom. You know, so for it, it's mostly Democrats behind this. But again, there are some Republicans. I don't want to pick on Democrats here. But but um, this is not what, what Democrats have expected from their party. And a lot of them have left the Democrat Party over this. And I don't think they're going to come back. Well, and we've had in Texas, we had several bills introduced, um, forcing vaccines on people, um, changing all the, the parameters, taking away the uh, informed consent and, and stuff like that. And those were all defeated before they even got to our governor, who I think would have vetoed him anyway. He seems to be a, uh, a parental choice type uh, governor. Yeah. But, but I think I, what really influenced those guys a lot in California was how much the, the drug makers were giving to California lawmakers. That came out in the Sacramento Bee. Uh, on June 18th, the industry gave more than $2 million to current lawmakers in 2013, 2014. And well, not only was there that money, but in some cases, they were whining and dining these lawmakers 
and donating to them as well. So uh, one of the lawmakers, they actually found out that he, him and his wife uh, did this trip to Hawaii that had this really nice expensive dinner at this really nice restaurant with uh, somebody from the pharmaceutical company. I mean, this is what's going on. So these guys are supposed to be representing us, and that's all they're supposed to be doing. So for this to even pass, trust me, there's going to be some huge backlash. Well, you know, you look at people like Richard Pan got 95000 uh, Assembly Speaker Tony Atkins, 90000 I mean, these are substantial amounts of money that these guys are getting. And so, of course, you could see why they sell out, but that's not why they're put in that position. They're put in that position to actually stand up for the rights of the people, not for these giant corporations who just, for them, it's a, it's, it's a game changer for them. They can just force as many vaccines as they want on people. They've been shown to have adverse reactions. And so it's the parent's choice in which, you know, to give their kids these vaccines. And that's what that's what really has pissed a lot of people off. Even Jim Carrey came out against it, uh, forcing this kind of medical tyranny um, on us. And, you know, I'd just like to note, um, cycling and, and, uh, has, has killed about 109 people in 2013, and measles has killed no one. And yet the reason this has all come about is because measles uh, supposedly happened in, uh, in Disneyland, started, started there, which it was also spread by people who had the measles, or had the measles vaccine, at least. And yeah. uh, so that it's just this this fear factor they push that, oh, you're going to get the measles. When I was a kid, and probably when we, you were younger too. Yeah, we got the measles. You got the measles. A big deal. Right, got, and you missed a few days of you school. Know, you know, they also have a mandatory chicken pox vaccine. It's like, wow, who didn't have chicken pox? I mean, even watch the Brady Bunch. The whole family had chicken pox. And in fact, when one kid would get it, you'd throw all your other kids in the same room and make them all get it at the same time and be done with it. So yeah, yeah. I was the last kid in my family to get it, and um, <laughs> I got the worst case of it. I had uh, the scars on the soles of my feet. Didn't die. <laughs> I was fine. I watched, uh, watched TV for a week and, you know, ate, uh, you know, ate in front of the TV. It was just a good time just sitting around doing nothing, reading comic books and stuff. Yeah. You get to stay home, eat ice cream, drink seven up. And, and like you said, watch TV. Of course, back then we didn't have cable, but you know, Hey, it was still good, but I'll tell you something that's really disturbing to me. And that is that our legislature and these I call them paranoid vaxxers. I mean, they have really, really had a massive fear-mongering campaign. They have got a lot of people absolutely terrified that if they leave their house with their kid, their kid's going to catch some disease. Yeah, it's there, totally there ridiculous. There have been stories. There's stories, I think, on the Sacramento Bee. No, the L.A. Times did a story on several ladies who stated, you know, I mean, they did actual interviews with their real names, so this wasn't fake, you mm -hmm. know. These women would not take their kids to the playground. Um, they would tell people, you know, if your kid's not vaccinated, I don't want your kid around me, right. you know, around my kids. I mean, they are really frightening a lot of people. And, and that's really sad. You know, they call us crazy. They call our side crazy. We're not crazy like that. You know, we are not. No, we actually crazy. read the medical inserts that are provided by the companies that say these things cause problems. And, and don't take them if you're pregnant, especially. Hey, finishing up real quick, we're, we're about to run out of time. You have some breaking news that you're working with a former gov uh, gubernatorial candidate of California. Yes, actually, um, I am now working with Tim Donnelly. He's a former assemblyman here in the state of California, and he also ran for governor in 2014. Um, we have decided to start the referendum process. Um, Mr. Donnelly filed that this morning with the attorney general's office, and it's already on their website. Um, we had to roll this out pretty quickly because some pro SB 277 people we're actually in the process of organizing a, what I would call a sham referendum, where they would soak up all the donor money, they would take all the volunteers um, away from our recall efforts because they're trying to actually save the politicians who are under recall. It's of very course. shady and very yeah. sneaky. Now, that sounds and, like a Monsanto tactic. They definitely learn from them. Lauren, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can find out more you. information, sb277recalls.com. Get involved. This is solutions. This is what it's all about. You have to get in the game if you're going to make any changes over here. That's the only way this stuff is going to work out. So California, SB277 Recalls, SB277Recalls.com. And that's going to do it for tonight's show. Uh, I'm your host, Rob Dew. It's been a pleasure doing the uh, first day of the month here in July. We are already halfway done with 2015, and it has definitely turned into a humdinger of a year. You can find us here. Every weekday night, 7 p.m. Central, please be, consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. 
It is a great way to help fund the, everything you see here. Everything is funded by PrisonPlanet.tv. So we thank our members out there, and we'll see you next time.